Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jeff here once again on the CC Mentor channel, your cryptocurrency coach and mentor, should you choose to accept that. And I am here today to share with you how to exchange Ethereum into BNB using your MetaMask wallet and a combination of some other things. We need to be able to have BNB in our MetaMask wallet for all these huge BNB opportunities that are happening. And at least on our team, and I know a lot of people, you know, are collecting Ethereum on the um, on the MetaMask wallet. And it's not exactly intuitive to be able to exchange that. You have to go through a couple of processes. There's different ways you can do it, but I'm going to show you a way that I found to be relatively simple. Um, saves on gas fees, and um, it is a process that will allow you to move your Ethereum into BNB so you can participate in the various smart contracts that are happening in the BNB space, et cetera. This is really valuable for us. Uh, we, our team works on an Ethereum smart contract that actually generates revenue for us or generates Ethereum. It's like an Ethereum multiplier program. And uh, by the way, if you'd like to learn more about that, please reach out to me. Uh, there's ways to reach out down in the description uh, on Telegram at CC Mentor. And um, right, I'll give you my direct link right to my Facebook Messenger and we can actually chat it up. So anyway, I don't want to spend a long time on this. I actually made another video and uh, doing this and I realized, wow, this could be so much simpler than the way I did it before. So I want to just jump right into it. Um, so first thing you're going to need to do, well, first, actually, the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your MetaMask wallet has the Binance Smart Chain Network connected. Now, if you've never used the Binance Smart Chain Network on your MetaMask, then this won't be there. You won't see this Binance Smart Chain. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to click on this custom RPC and you're going to need to put in some information here. The network name, which I just called it Binance Smart Chain. That's just a title for your reference. You can call it, you know, BSC or whatever you want to call it. But I use Binance Smart Chain. And then your new RPC URL is this. I'm not going to read it out for you, but I will put it down in the description so that you have this that you can just copy and paste. And... Um, that's the exact thing. So that, and now you can see it says URL is already present in existing list of networks. That's because I already set it up in my MetaMask wallet. Um, but it won't be, if you don't have it, it won't be there for you. Uh, the chain ID is 56 and the currency symbol is obviously BNB. And then the block explorer URL is BSC scan. So once you have all those things put in there, you will click on save. I obviously can't do that because it's already been done, but that's what you need to do first. And then once you've done that, then you'll see Binance Smart Chain uh, in your list of networks. Now, it's important to understand that Ethereum and Binance are on, uh, Ethereum and BNB are on different networks. They're on different blockchains, basically. So you need to do some sort of mechanics and tech trickery to make things talk to each other. And I'm going to show you that process right here, right now, live on the CC Mentor channel. And by the way, if you like the content here, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications button so that you can get all the videos. I'm going to start making more of these, what I would call utility style videos that are going to help you to, you know, make shortcuts or create shortcuts for different processes that you're going to need to do over time. Um, different things that you can do with MetaMask, etc. Anyway, so once you have the Binance Smart Chain set up, we'll move on here to the next level. So you can see here in this particular wallet that I have 0 0.598 Ethereum. I'm gonna swap some of that into BNB. So if you go to the Binance Smart Chain for this wallet, you can see I have a little bit, of, I think I have a little bit, yeah, oh, yeah, I've got half a BNB in here. So just another caveat, I just wanna let you know, you will need to have some BNB in the wallet to cover your gas fees to make this process work. So I'm gonna assume that you've got BNB someplace and that you have maybe used one of our other videos to move some BNB into your wallet. So you are gonna to need to have a little bit of BNB. If you haven't done that yet, uh, check on the channel here. We've got a couple different videos on how to do that depending on where you are in the world um, and depending on where and how you've purchased your BNB in the first place. There's actually two different types of BNB. One is the BEP20 token and the other is the BEP2 token. Don't even ask me to get started trying to explain the tech. I'm not sure I could anyway. I'm not sure I even understand it. I just know that we need to, to create a little bit of a bridge so that the two different things can talk to each other. So the BEP20 is kind of talks to Ethereum, but then we've got to turn it into BEP2 so we can use it in a blah, 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 blah. <laughs> can make your head explode with all the tech. But we're just going to try to keep it simple because all we want to do is make sure we can use it. So here's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go into... Uh, 
Binance.org slash EN slash bridge. So I'm going to do something real quick here. You will need a VPN for this. In the infinite wisdom of um, Binance world, if you're in the United States or several other countries, they don't like it. No, no likey. So I just, I always use a VPN. By the way, a VPN is something you should probably use anyway, uh, no matter what, because it's great for your security. You're in crypto. You want to make sure that you stay hack proof as much as possible. And there are situations where you're going to need to log in from an IP address that's not in your own country, potentially. So, um, and the one I prefer, by the way, just real quick, let me just, uh, I'll do my little commercial for NordVPN. This is the one I've been using for several years now, and I will put a link down in the description so that you've got access to that. I can get you a coupon that gets you 65, or 68% off. It's, they have all these specials going on all the time, plus some kind of free gift. Uh, you can put it on up to six different devices, which is pretty cool. So. Um, that's uh, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. You know, there are free VPNs out there. You can look that up too if you'd like. I really like this one because it lets me do a lot of different things. Um, but you can see, I'm going to pull it over here onto the screen and you can see that I'm connected in the United States right now. Why am I telling you this? Well, the reason is because I'm going to show you what happens if you try to log into Binance.org slash EN slash bridge from a US IP address. It's going to say, uh, the board goes back. It seems you are accessing Binance.org from an IP address belonging to one of the following countries, the United States of America or Albania, Bosnia, Belarus, blah, blah, blah. Look at those countries. I mean, nothing against any of these countries, but this is the United States of America in, you know, in here with Cuba and Iraq and Iran and North Korea. I mean, come on, man. Anyway, don't get me started with that. But again, this is the reason why you will want to use the VPN. And like I said, you should always use, use a VPN. So I'm going to come back to my VPN again. I'm going to log in from, let's just say, Australia. And then we're going to be cool. Bing, we're in from Australia. And now you will see, we'll close this out. We'll do it again. And we will see no such message, he says with a hopeful tone. Brilliant. OK, no problem, no restriction. All right. so. Then you're going to open your MetaMask wallet and then you're going to click on the Ethereum network because remember we are going to be moving Ethereum. So let's just say for the sake of this demonstration that we're going to move. Oh, let's leave some in there. Let's do 0.5 Ethereum. So, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick the asset, which is going to be Ethereum. We're going to use the Ethereum network. It should just default to that and we're going to exchange it to BEP20. Now we do have to connect our wallet. So we're going to do that. We're going to connect old wallet ski here to the MetaMask. Connect. Bam. Okay. And then the amount. I'm not going to do max. I want to leave some Ethereum in here. Gas being what it is. So you're going to put 0.5. Actually, we're not going to put 0.5. We're going to put 0 0.5. Important little snag. Because if you try to put, if you don't put the zero in there and you're doing less than a whole number or yet less than one, it, you'll here I'll just show you put it in and what's it going to tell me see it's not going to let me go to the next step huh what's going on I don't want to do I don't know what's happening but if I add the zero boom oh destination address okay that's why <laughs> hello you know the destination address is going to be actually your same wallet Okay, so remember, this is just a bridge. We're just exchanging, basically. We're using this as a bridge to shift our Ethereum into a BEP20 token. They'll understand each other. So I'm going to copy my address in there. There we go. Let me show you that one more time, though, that I was trying to show you. Now you can see if I just put 0.5, you can see I don't have the next button. But now if I put 0 0.5. Now I do have the next button. So now it's going to say next to Rooney. Okay. All right, then it's going to ask me to confirm and then I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. So I am going to and notice, by the way, the network fee is zero ETH. Hmm. I'll let you just ponder that one for a second. All right, so we're going to confirm it. And now the address here, you don't want to change anything. This is the bridge address. It's actually creating the bridge for you. You don't have to swap it around and throw different things into different wallets. So we're just going to go ahead and submit that transaction via MetaMask. It's going to ask me to confirm it. 
for a whopping $3.53. How about that, guys? Because it's just an exchange. It's not a smart contract we're doing right now. It's just an exchange. So it's not really costing us, you know, the arm and leg gas fees that hopefully very soon will be um, will be happening um, at a much lesser price. Okay, so now we're gonna have to wait for the confirmation. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause things out. Typically, it takes like 15, 10, 15 minutes. Um, I'm gonna go into activity. You can see that it's pending right now. We'll go ahead and take a look at it on the scan and it's probably just gonna say pending. Yeah, so it's gonna say pending and it says estimated confirmation 14 minutes. So I'm not gonna just sit here with the dead air for 14 minutes. So I'm just gonna wait and I am going to put this on pause and then we'll come back when it's ready. All right, see you in a few. All righty then, well, according to Etherscan, this has now been confirmed. It looked like it took about 12 minutes. Boy, it felt like I should have been playing the theme from Jeopardy. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, one thing about crypto, you got to have a little patience. So, all right, let's see what Binance Smart Chain has to say about that whole thing. Okay, so it is saying that it is in fact still pending here. So you can see there's seven of 12 confirmations. Um, so we need a little bit more time on this one. Um, so I'm going to just hit pause once again and just kind of wait for this to complete. It needs 12 of 12. And uh, again, you know, one of the things that's really important is to be patient and just, you know, be methodical about your processes. Um, you know, it's really well worth being able to have these kinds of tools available to you when you need to move things around and change things. And, you know, there will, there will come a time um, in crypto where we have instant bridges for things to go cross-platform. But uh, in a way, <clears throat> you know, even though crypto has been around for several years, we're still in that early, early, early adoption phase. And it's important to know, like, you know, we are the explorers. We are the ones, the adventurers, the ones that are out here basically changing the way the world is going to do money and the way the world is going to do finance and the way the world is going to do security and everything. I mean, it, it's really, really exciting to be living in this particular time. So anyway, that's my little uh, <laughs> my little philosophical commentary while we're waiting. But again, I'm not going to just sit here and and ramble on while this is all pending. So I'm gonna pause it once again, and then we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, well, that was only about a minute since I paused the last time. So here we are, 12 of 12, and you can see it still says the transaction is pending, but um, that's okay because it really isn't. In fact, we can confirm it over here on Etherscan that we have at least 14 block confirmations. So we are good to go there. And you can also open up your MetaMask wallet. We are still just making a point here, still on the Ethereum mainnet. I want to say this one more time in case you didn't get it the first time. <clears throat> I know I showed you how to set up the um, this you know, Binance Smart Chain in MetaMask. And I do want to reiterate and want to emphasize that you are going to need to have a little bit of BNB in there from whatever source, which is a different video. This is a video about transferring Ethereum and exchanging Ethereum into BNB. But there's other videos that I have on the channel that I explain to you how to get from your uh, your BNB coin from wherever you may purchase it in the US, maybe it's crypto.com or binance.us or whatever, how to get it over into your MetaMask wallet. So you wanna make sure you've done that as well. Um, and then we should be, okay, we should be good to go here. So I'm just gonna continue on because we're pretty much done with the Binance bridge at the moment. So you can see here that on the Ethereum mainnet, we have, you know, the uh, 0.5 has gone out of my wallet. And where did it go? Well, I mean, we look down here, if we look at assets, we, we only see the 0.09 Ethereum that's left. We don't see the BNB. If we go over to BNB, remember I had about 0 0.53 or something, I think, um, BNB. So if we go over to the Binance Smart Chain, you know, we'll see that I have 0 0.51. Yeah, that's what it was. And and my new, uh, my new stuff hasn't shown up. So why is that? What's going on with that? Should I be freaking out right now? No, I should not be freaking out right now because there's one more step and that's where our friend PancakeSwap comes into play. So PancakeSwap, if you're, Surely you're probably familiar with it by now. Uh, if you go to PancakeSwap, I'm going to start this from the homepage, PancakeSwap.finance, go there, and then um, you can do a lot of things here. I'm not going to get into all the things you can do with PancakeSwap, but 
we're just going to use it to make an exchange right now. So we click on the trade tab, we click on exchange, and then we're going to connect our wallet to PancakeSwap. We're going to connect our MetaMask wallet to PancakeSwap. Now, I do want to show you one thing real quick, and that is that right now uh, I am on the Binance Smart Chain, but I'm going to swap it over to Ethereum just a second because you might just be there when you get to PancakeSwap, and I want to show you, you can't connect the Ethereum network to PancakeSwap. It only works on BNB. Okay, it works on the Binance Smart Chain. So we're going to connect the wallet, we're going to connect MetaMask, and it's going to say, eh, nope, can't do it, unsupported chain ID error. Error, error. All right, sorry, feeling a little punchy tonight. Um, so I'm going to swap it over, go to Binance Smart Chain. I'm going to have to reconnect my wallet. We try it again. Okay, so I'm connected to my Binance wallet. I'm going to connect on MetaMask. Okay, so now you can see, uh, because I have this um, selected to be BNB right here, uh, you can see that my balance of 0 0.513651 is there, but there should be more than that there, right? There should be my, basically my Ethereum version of Binance tokens should be in this wallet. So what do I have to do to make that happen? Well, first of all, we don't want this to be BNB. We want to be exchanging Ethereum to BNB. So we're going to go, boom, we're going to swap that and we're going to change the asset to Ethereum. And boom, well, look at that. That 0.5 Ethereum that I put in there is there. It's right there. How cool is that? So now we are going to make the exchange. So I'm gonna go ahead and max out the exchange here. And it's gonna tell me, boom, that I am able to do that. Uh, and I'm gonna get 2.54443 BNB for my trouble. So how cool is that? Now we're going to go swap a Rooney. Now remember, I've got 0 0.51365. So when I'm done here, I should have a little over 3 BNB. All right, so I'm going to hit swap. I'm going to confirm the swap. It's going to come up here and give me a confirmation request. And look at that. Gas fee, 0 0.00085 BNB. What is that, like pennies? I don't even know what that is. It's ridiculously small. Okay, transaction submitted. And again, we can we can view that on Etherscan or BSC scan. In this case, we're going to go to the Binance Smart Chain scan. You might remember this address here from when we were setting up. Okay, we just, we've already got a success here. So wait, let me go back to PancakeSwap. I'm going to close that. Uh, PancakeSwap appears to be just a little bit slow on the uptake here because it has not confirmed it yet, but it's happened. Actually, let's look in the wallet and well, let's see. But a boom. Oh, there it is. 3.06 BNB. Da, 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 da. Awesome. How cool is that, guys? So that is it. That's how the process works. That's how you exchange Ethereum into basically BEP20 tokens and then change it into BEP2 tokens. Is I believe the process that just happened. But the bottom line is now you got BNB in your wallet that you can use for whatever, for putting into smart contracts. By the way, if you like that sort of thing, check out some of my other videos. You can look at what's the latest and greatest things that we're using to generate either high yields or, or staking or whatever using BNB. And like I said before, if you like to collect Ethereum, then let us show you how to do that too. Reach out to me. Um, lots of ways to reach me. I'm pretty easy to find. So anyway, guys, that is all there is to this video for now. I appreciate your patience, patience through all the pauses. And um, I guess that's all. So if you liked this video, please give it a big boom, thumbs up, and maybe subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and then you'll get notifications of all the new videos that I put out. And let me know in the comments below if this was valuable for you. Let me know if it was simple enough to understand. Let me know what other kinds of things you'd like to learn and what other kinds of things you're interested in because I want to make this all about you. All right, so once again, this is Jeff, your cryptocurrency mentor here on the CC Mentor channel, and I look forward to connecting with you on the next video. See ya.